For the ultimate no compromises compact gaming PC, look no further than the Obsidian Series 250D from Corsair. Click now to learn more. Welcome to my second premium IEM video. The Etymotic ER4 PT contrasts sharply with the IE80s that I looked at last time, where the IE80s are targeted at consumers with their bass heavy sound signature, great comfort and stylish look. The ER4s are targeted at professionals with emphasis on high accuracy sound and exceptional noise isolation. That's not to say, however, that general consumers can't enjoy an accurate in-ear monitor as much as a professional for many purists out there, hearing the music the way the artist intended for it to be heard is more important than pumping up bass or playing around with EQ dials to make it sound better. So with that in mind, here we go. Inside the plastic hard box that has everything inside of it, we find an accessory package that really looks more like equipment you'd find in an audiologist's office than something you'd expect to find in a consumer product box. Uh, everything appears to be designed with practicality in mind, but you do get a lot of stuff with the ER4 PTs, including a shirt clip, an airline adapter, an eighth inch to quarter inch adapter, two sets of large and one set of small three flange ear tips, two sets of glider ear tips, two sets of medium foam ear tips, a filter removal tool, and four filters to help smooth frequency response and prevent wax buildup, an ER4PT to ER4S adapter cable that improves sound accuracy, but also increases impedance, so it might not be optimal to use with your phone or other MP3 player, a user's manual a warning, and finally, oh yeah, a carrying case, and finally the earphones themselves. There is one more thing and it's actually a little bit unique. This is a signed channel matching compliance graph showing that one of Etymotic's technicians personally checked to ensure that both of the balanced armature Accu drivers behaved the same way, then signed off on it before packaging your product and shipping it to you. A very nice touch. Now it's time to focus on the earphones themselves. They look like a piece of equipment and feel like a piece of equipment. The R and L indicators are simply a red dot for the one that goes in your right ear, which is fine if you're in a recording studio, but a pain in the butt if you're on a dimly lit bus. Each earphone has a unique uh, thin twisted wire lead that goes back to a bulky heavy join and then a much thicker, heavier four foot wire. Well, the overall length is four feet, but the, the gauge of the wire is much thicker here. Um, it's unfortunate that it's so long and heavy because particularly with the three flange tips, which sounded best for me, the weight pulled on my ears in a way that was pretty uncomfortable. The included clip is an inelegant solution at best. And instead I opted to wear them upside down and run the wires over my ear like this. They aren't designed to be worn that way, but it worked reasonably well and saved me at least once from having the flanges uncomfortably jerked from my ears. Although there was a time when it didn't save me and that was when I decided to wear it that way. Comfort wise, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. These are the most uncomfortable earphones I've ever used. Your mileage may vary of course, but when the user's manual simply says, moistening eases insertion for the flanges, that's a pretty strong indicator that Etymotic is aware of the situation. Lube up because you ain't gonna like it much otherwise. Uh, the foam ear tips don't hurt, but like all foam ear tips, they wear out relatively quickly. So that's not really an option for me. I don't wanna be ordering new ones all the time. And the gliders weren't an option for me either because they don't seal as well. So their noise isolation isn't as good as the others. And the bass response is not as strong as the others. Okay, so thanks Linus. They feel like a tool rather than a toy and they're uncomfortable. So why do they have the right to exist? Do they have any redeeming qualities? The answer is yes. Let's start with their passive noise isolation. I don't have the equipment to validate their 35 to 42 decibel claim, so all I can do is describe the experience for you. Once you get them inserted, they're so deep that even yawning doesn't affect the sound. The feeling of your surroundings shifts. It's like walking from a crowded ski lodge out into an empty forest after a fresh snowfall. The entire world just has a muffled and subdued feel to it. And the only thing left is the sound of your own thoughts. Except instead of it being your own thoughts that you hear, it's your music. Without needing to turn up the volume to compensate for environmental noise, everything sounds as crystal clear as if the sounds were being beamed by magic into your head. Every instrument is easily discernible from the others to a degree that I've never experienced before. 
The difference in clarity is noticeable when I compare the ER4 PTs to the entire rest of my stable of headphones, which includes several other products in this price range. And more interestingly, the difference is noticeable with sources that ranged from listening to music on YouTube all the way to uncompressed files of songs that I know very, very well. There are some caveats though. With accurate sound comes, to some people, boring sound. There is no emphasis on bass to speak of, and Etymotic has optimized for isolation rather than soundstage. One of the things that stood out to me about the IE80s was how relatively open they sounded for an IEM. Whoops, there goes my phone. The ER4s take me right back to that traditional between your ears sound that is characteristic of IEMs. Something else I noticed was that switching between the IE80s and the ER4s felt like changing the lights in a room from, from a warm glow to a, a cool glow. Either is fine once I'm used to it and after 15 minutes I'm completely adjusted, but side-by-side -side listening tests were actually a little bit unpleasant because the sound signatures of these two products contrast so starkly. Going from IE80 to ER4 makes the ER4 sound bland and uninteresting, while going from the ER4 to the IE80s make them sound bass heavy and muddled by comparison. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Bottom line, they're just not comfortable enough for me to use them as my daily drivers. During the day, the heavy cable was a bigger inconvenience for me than I actually expected, and when they snag on something accidentally, they're very painful, even with them wrapped around my ears. And at night, uh, not being able to tell left from right without turning on a flashlight is a pain, and then the fact that I normally sleep in my IEMs, which is not happening with these, is a showstopper there as well. But they weren't designed to be daily drivers for general consumers. Just look at the website. I mean, it's functional, sure. You can get replacement parts, order custom ear molds for a hundred bucks, which is actually really cool. Custom ear molds will fit you perfectly, so comfort problem goes away. And you can learn about the product, but it looks like a hearing aid store or something. They're catering to a different crowd. And comfort aside for me, they sound amazing. I could listen to them with zero fatigue for hours, and I have. So if the objective is not to be fashionable, but rather to get precise sound delivered to your eardrums with as little outside interference as possible, then the ER4s get a big thumbs up from me. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments, or better yet, on the Linus Tech Tips forum, which will be linked in the video description, if you prefer a flat sound signature or a more fun signature, knowing that you're not getting you know, the music delivered to you the way that the artist necessarily intended. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Guys, I'm totally open to your feedback. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.